two teams that love to hate each other will get it on. Here's where the gut check, man. This is where the fun starts. Wind chill is around zero or Where below. else would you rather be? Where else would you rather be? They've got to take off the best team in the league. You now. like the pressure? This is what the game's all about. Get yourself fired, teammate up. Let's go. The most important thing is how you finish. The challenge is great today for Just team. another new game, another chance to win. Fire to throw, pumping, looking, fire. Nice catch by Perrine. Up the middle, running from 35, 30. One tackle to break, he does. 25, 20. Spectacular play. Jaguars win it. The Indianapolis Colts stunning the NFL. Going into the end zone, it's batted up. Yeah! Yes! Last 74, Dino. The 25. I love your enthusiasm. I love, hey, listen, remember, this is some toys, okay? Don't okay, cross this 15, okay? Don't okay, cross this 15. I tell you, we can't play. We can't play. We're too stupid. Don't get your mind out of this game. I can see you guys going off in a little some other spot. Get him back on here and kick their ass. Touchdown passes ever. And in the snow, the legends of Walter Payton, John Riggins, and Jim Brown wait for him. On third down and goal to go, Marcus Allen darts over for the touchdown for Kansas City. His 100th career rushing touchdown. Now come here, I want to tell you something. You have dominated them to this point. You have dominated them in the kicking game. We got to dominate them one more play. They starting to say we can't run the damn football. They want to lie, stand made up, and they say it We'll run on Marty. We'll make one Let's go. Damn day. All day. All day. Hey, let's stay. We need it in there. We need to get in the end zone, all right? No, keep your hands in. No mistakes. Waits throws it over the top. Bounce. Caught. Ellard. Touchdown. Put that one in the highlights. And Mary Yankel to believe this. And Green Bay has a Cinderella season well underway. Lost the end zone. A one hit Kansas City has the best record in the National Football League. Those two little letters, W-E-We, those two little letters, U-S, us, they're powerful. They're powerful. We kept fighting, took it in overtime, still fighting, man. We're finding a way to win. We're finding a way to win. That's what this game's about. we got to find a way to win every week. Winners do what it takes to win, and we got a bunch of winners in this room. Yep. Teams have to come through here. Uh, yeah. Go to the Super Bowl. Yep, man. They're in for a long, Talk to long me. Ride. Here we go. Fasten your seatbelts, folks. 47 guys fought their fannies off today. The Steelers are in the final four of professional football. The kick is up. It looks wide. It's wide left. The Colts. The Colts are going to the AFC Championship game. We need everybody today. Every single person on this team. It, it comes from the heart, baby. Pump it, it up. It comes from the heart. Going to the NFC title game. Wow, what a story. Here we go for the right to go to the Super Bowl. Four man rush, he's going to throw it deep. And there's a man open down there, and it is caught. What a great grab by Ernie Mills. The class of this Cowboys offense is wearing that Green Bay defense out. And Dallas, your team is about to return to a Super Bowl. Magnificent. He has time and he launches a rainbow and it goes up and it's starting to come down to the end zone. The ball hit the turf. The Steelers are headed.
headed to Phoenix. And this is one of the most unbelievable football games we have ever witnessed. 1995. That sounds more like a price than a year. But there were no bargains in the NFL this season. Everything, even disappointment and defeat, had a high cost. The Dolphins, they spent more than $12 million in bonuses for free agents. They were the preseason pick to win the AFC, and they opened the year with four straight wins. And then the bottom fell out. They struggled to earn a wild card berth, and a humbling loss in the playoffs brought an end to Don Shula's legendary career. Uh, other teams, like the Raiders and Rams, also sizzled and then fizzled. On the other hand, there were those who started slow but ended strong. Teams that looked shoddy and poorly made at first, but by year's end, proved to be high quality. Why does it rain on down when I'm waiting for the sunshine? The Philadelphia Eagles and the Detroit Lions learned that if you steer off course, the road to the Super Bowl runs along a stormy path. There's no excuse for the way you play. It's my job to find answers. I'm going to do my damnedest to find some answers on what's going on. Gotta get it done some kind of way to do it, baby. Gotta get it done. Gotta get it done. Gotta get it done. For the Eagles, bad weather gave way to a ray of hope, Ray Rhodes. And his road was a mean one-way street. No rest stops, no yielding. Rhodes brought 33 new players to Philadelphia. Big names like Ricky Waters and no names. Former bouncers, truck drivers, and liquor store clerks. Kept fighting, kept fighting. Kept fighting, man. That's the thing I enjoy. We kept fighting. Ray Rhodes is a fighter, but Wayne Fonts is a lover. Even after losing six of his first nine games, Fonts kept his thumb and his chin up. It's not over, and if you're looking for me to give it up or this team to give it up, you're mistaken. I wouldn't be surprised if we go ten and six. Bond's prediction came true as the Lions' number one ranked offense led them to seven straight victories. Herman Moore, what a grab! Nobody does it better. In Philadelphia, players fought to save their own jobs. In Detroit, the Lions battled to save their head coach's job. All oh, these ups and downs don't feel good for me, I'll tell you that. Finally, something. Something. Hey, you know, my mama be proud right now. Wayne Fonts proved that even in the NFL, a little love can go a long way. Uh, if it's, if it's uh, Fonts' love, whatever it is, uh, it's working for us. If Fonts' love reversed the Lions' fortune, Ray Rhodes' quest for respect did the same for the Eagles. Teams are going to respect our football team, too, because they saw a champion out there fighting back. Before the Eagles hosted Dallas, Rhodes told his team that the Cowboys did not respect them. Yeah, we're going to warm up on uh, Philly. Yeah, we're going to warm up on that Philly cheese. Get some respect, man. Time to get some respect. Some respect. In the end, Rhodes was right. Barry Switzer makes the call. Here's your ball game. Eagles could win it if they stop the Cowboys here. They give it to Smith. He doesn't make it. They stop them. The Eagles take over a third. The Eagles take over a third. The referees are talking. We've got some problems. We've got some problems. Oh, oh they're going to call the two-minute warning. They're going to say it was no play. Eagles stop them once, and they stop them again. I don't think I might go next to that big. I think I would have punted. Here we go, fourth down. They give it to Smith, and they stop them again. They stop them again. And this time, they can't take it away from the Eagles. A little bit of respect. A little bit of respect. That's all we want. The Eagles had finally earned the Cowboys' respect. 
but Detroit's Lomas Brown remained unconvinced. Brown guaranteed a Lions victory over the Eagles in the playoffs. It would prove to be only fitting that Wayne Fonts limped into Veterans Stadium, and Ray Rhodes marched. When you get guys pouring gasoline on the fire, like Lomas Brown did, that can't do anything but help. He's got it! 25-20! Four times back to the end zone, the Eagles! Anything possible if you're willing to fight for it. The Lions don't know what hit them. The Lions don't know what hit them. Touchdown, Eagles! And Lomas, touchdown, Lomas for Lions! Lomas, touchdown, touchdown, Eagles! He guaranteed a win, man! This should be something. As long as we bleed in each other, we go out and fight and stick together for 60 minutes, man. We're going to be hard to beat. Believe all year in our football team that they were to go out and show people that they can't guarantee anything but death and taxes. That's always guaranteed. Yeah, that's right. Jim Harbaugh had no guarantees when the season began. In fact, when he learned he would be in the background as Ted Marchabroda's backup, he considered retirement. But he moved to the forefront in Miami and led the Colts back from a 21-point deficit. Pressure coming. He steps up. He looks, throws it down. Field. It's headed for Floyd Turner. He got it. Floyd Turner will score. You never know. Go shoot that dog. Pass it to Harbaugh out of the shotgun. Here comes the pressure. Jimmy rolls out of it. Rolls on the run into the end zone. They won in Miami and stunned the defending champs the next week. But to their fans, they were still the same old Colts. I'm a Colt fan and I think they're going to get the s*** kicked out of them today. <laughs> In 1995, the Colts did the kicking. They were a straightforward, no-frills, ugly duckling team led by a quarterback with GQ looks and popular mechanic style. He resembled a carefree college kid Add on backwards, still saying hi to mom after nine years in the league. Hey mom, hey dad. That was sweet. That was nice. That was pretty nice. Harbaugh finished the season as the NFL's highest rated quarterback and led his Colts to the playoffs where their astounding run of good play and better fortune continued. We ain't even supposed to be here. Nobody wants us in the playoffs. In the divisional playoffs, they stunned the team with the NFL's best record. For Harbaugh, the reality of this reversal of fortune was better than a dream. Beginning of the season, I would have wished for something. I don't think I would wish for as good as things that, that turned out this year. Nice drive engineered by Jim Harbaugh. Great delivery by Jim Harbaugh. What a throw by Jimmy Harbaugh. Oh, Jim Harbaugh. Oh, what a dimension Jim Harbaugh. Oh, yeah. Back in it. I believe in you, baby. Come on. Big comeback. Jim Harbaugh quarterback. Jim Harbaugh. Starting the NFL. This is the fun, great season. And it's going on. In 1995, fans in the Carolinas and Jacksonville witnessed the finest expansion teams ever. But while they enjoyed a new beginning, the die-hard supporters of the Cleveland Browns suffered a sad ending. Yet the departure of the Browns was countered by the rebirth of the Green Bay Packers. And each of these franchises proved that pro football is a game of passion. You want to feel that passion, that commitment? Come on with our cameramen and soundmen down on the field. We've got to try to find a way to get ignited. Boom, boom, boom. All right, man, let's get hot and stay that way. Woo! You gotta love this, you gotta love it. Gotta have a tempo, man, gotta have a tempo. The best in the National Football League, let's go. Nice hat. How would you like to be an ass with one of those helmets on up there and just stand there the whole time? Well, you're probably from Staten Island or East Iceland. <laughs> or Brooklyn. <laughs> in 50 minutes, you're the enemy. I know that. But right now, you're still talking to me. They're a pretty good guy. We got a crisis every 15 minutes. Matt Barr's got a little flu. Tell him to throw up on his own time. Well, he don't have to play, Doc. All he's got to do is kick. Do, 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 do. Okay, okay, okay. Great day for football. Line up on numbers. Line up for the national anthem. Low to the high. Low to the high. 
will have a nervous breakdown by the time this guy finishes the national anthem. Through the perilous crowd's going to fall asleep by the time this guy gets finished. Man, them boys singing that thing, though. That was more like it. Let's go, baby! Let's go! <laughs> hey, guys, where else would you rather be? They're going to pay you money to have this kind of fun. If Laura would not use the bathroom, he'd be right back. Well, let's see if the radio's turned on. It's on, it's on. Let's go, Jeffrey. Let's go. Yep, 15. Just push it in, right? 84 Q Hopper. 84 Q Hopper. Okay. Is it on? Yes, it's on. The double wing right, 20's out. Start trips right DT, bring the toe guy across, run the slant, and bootleg the guy with the guy in motion delaying and hitting it in the flat and the Y coming across. To the weak side, to the tight end. Yeah, okay. The guy with the 80 number. Yeah, I know, I know. All right, come on, babe. Keep your head up. Keep your head up. Keep your head up. What the hell was that? What are we doing? They don't know what's going on. What do you want? Just make the decision, Frank. Just make the decision. Get you an assistant, damn it! Get you somebody to remind you what to do. Bumble, bumble, bumble. Five, seven, hundred! Five, get in the game! Oops. Didn't come here to play patty cake! You can drive trucks through the holes. It's the same thing that happened last. Listen, I'm gonna show you how much one yard is. This fun. They can't stop me. I can lean that gun fuck. Only guy was covering me was a referee one time. Uh, referee covered you? <laughs> he was standing I tell you what the hell. Excuse me. Some of those guys can cover. <laughs> Mr. Official. You check that 91 on defense's jersey, okay? You're going to find a lot of silicone on it. On defense. Uh, hey, not our team. Their team. What's the center with the head bob and moving the ball? Okay, thanks, Coach. You don't need my help. Usually you guys see him right. About 20% of the time. They got 12 guys in the huddle there the whole time. 12 in the huddle. That's a lingering rule. You can't do that. Now let's quit babying Michael Irvin all the time. Quit babying Dallas. Make them win the game. They got 16 games to get where they got to go. I tell you what, I am brain dead. Oh, right. God dang. 40 freaking seconds. Son of a fuck. Oh, I'm crying out loud. Get the. You get over there. What the. What's going on here? It went inside, Alec. You go to the flare. But you better calm me down. Somebody, Joe. Suck! I don't. Oh! Get him! Get him! Oh, no! Blow the damn whistle! He gonna get hurt! No, he didn't! I think he was blowing it, but it was froze. Holy cow, somebody's got some flesh on the bottom of their cleats. Damn you! Damn you, McNair! The first time somebody's got me off my feet! Jeffrey, just a little better tempo. Just a little better tempo. That's rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. Let's go our best play with our best player. Rock and roll, baby! Rock and roll! Somebody right here is going to make the heroic play. Hustle, 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 hustle! It's right there for the taking. Here I come, here I come, here I come! This is serious business! Team, turn in, turn in! Money's worth tonight. Go to the crowd. <laughs> While pro football's passion is played out on the field, it also spills over into the stands where fans can feel and touch it. In the history of the NFL, few cities have ever felt as close to a team as Cleveland did to its Browns. For 50 years, the Browns slugged it out on the primordial turf of ancient Cleveland Stadium. Every game day, over 80,000 fans reached out and embraced their heroes. Through the years, win or lose, this love affair never died. In 1995, Cleveland Stadium looked just the same, but its heart was broken. The team had fallen on hard times, and worse yet, it was leaving. After the final home game, one last time-honored tradition was observed. They just want to hold on to the memories, see some of the players for the final time. They just want to sit 
and stay warm in the memories of so many years. Nobody wants to let this moment go. Nobody wants this team to go. Nobody inside these walls. The cold reality of the Cleveland Browns story blew through the league, but one frigid outpost was not affected. The unmatched legacy of Green Bay and its Packers includes a coach named Lombardi and the voice of John Facenda. Lombardi. A certain magic still lingers in the very name. It speaks of duels in the snow and cold November mud. The face of the modern Packers has changed. But in 1995, the look of a winner returned after three decades of disappointment. Soon the Packers were communing with their faithful, not to say goodbye, but to celebrate a return to the glory days. This passionate autumn romance was not ending, but growing ever stronger. You're gonna do it today! <laughs> the Barney era, baby! Blue, 58 to the Brett Favre led the Green Bay resurgence while leading the NFL in passing. My head's getting bigger. These hats are getting smaller. Shut up. Favre recalled Bart Starr when he directed a playoff upset of the 49ers, and Reggie White pulled a Willie Davis impersonation. But Coach Mike Holmgren was no Lombardi, at least not yet. You keep your heads up, and you're proud to be a Green Bay Packer, and I'm proud to be your coach. In 1995, the Packers were champions again, and Favre was named league MVP. Somewhere, Lombardi and Facenda are smiling. Packers are inspired, lusty, young, and eager. And it is as a team that the Green Bay Packers will be remembered. They will be remembered as the faces of victory. When the season began, everyone thought that the road to the Super Bowl and the NFC would end with another championship showdown between the Cowboys and the 49ers. Both teams played with a will of iron, but they also revealed feet of clay. For both, the road back to Pro Football Summit turned into an uphill battle. And for San Francisco, it ended in a shocking playoff defeat. This is uh, absolutely awful. Um, we uh, demand and expect way more from ourselves. And it's not something that we're going to be uh, very happy about. It's uh, something that feels very awkward and uh, wrong. Uh, it feels very strange. The 49ers' entire season was strained as the defending champions sustained a steady barrage of brutal hits. Ravaged by injuries, the Niners knew that playing with pride meant playing with pain. Bonkus, you need to get that thing x-rayed? Did you break it? Oh, it's hurting really bad. Doesn't Did you matter. break it? I don't know. If you broke it, you can't play. Let's tape it up and play. Steve Young missed five games with a sore shoulder, but still led the league in completion percentage, and Jerry Rice established a new single-season record for receiving yardage. With 122 receptions, it seemed just about the only pass that Rice didn't catch was the one he threw. It's off to Laville, it's a reverse to Rice who bobbles the ball, and he's passing! Way down, all alone at the goal line, still touchdown 49ers! I don't believe it! The 49ers' top-rated defense produced seven scoring plays. Short pass, another interception, Ken Dorn, he'll score! He'll come in! Touchdown 49ers! Other San Francisco teams may have gone further, but none ever fought harder. Just when their season seemed to be falling apart, the 49ers delivered their most devastating knockout punch of the season. Cowboys 49ers, biggest game of the year. Don't forget what happened last year. All day long. Don't forget what happened last year. After losing twice to the 49ers in 1994, the Dallas Cowboys were beaten again. Gets the snap, short drop, pass to Irvin. But this time, they were also embarrassed. Merton Hanks to the 30, down to the 20, waves at Troy Aikman, and scores. Unbelievable. I take full responsibility. I told him, hey, it's my game. I lost the damn thing. Give it to me. But hey, get it out of your system, whatever you want. Let's get our ready to go play the Oakland Raiders. I have the confidence and relationship that I can make a statement that our team was outcoached and not worry about what our coaches feel about. All these things 
or mystique and created by by uh, the media and people on the side. I do basically the same things I've always done and basically what all head coaches do. I talk, I discuss, I know what the game plan is, and I spend half my time, instead of being on, on the walkthrough out there today, I'm in here talking to you guys. Barry Switzer had his share of distractions, but his players never lost their focus. The Cowboys fielded the finest talent in the NFL, and they overcame nearly every obstacle on the road to the Super Bowl. The best team money could buy played as advertised, with a familiar trio of blue chippers leading the way. Aikman still running, cuts it up at the five. Oh, 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 Troy Aikman was reliable as ever. Michael Irvin broke his own team record with 111 pass receptions. And then there was Emmett Smith. Aikman pitched to Emmett Smith, leading to the left, has a block by Johnson at the 10 yard line. Still free at the five, down to the three, touchdown Cowboys. Emmitt Smith again, 15, big hold, it's 10, to the 5, he scores, Emmitt Smith, touchdown Cowboys! Emmitt Smith personified the Cowboys' single-minded intensity. His fourth NFL rushing title was a triumph of tenacity as well as talent. And his league record 25 rushing touchdowns surpassed the rushing touchdown total of every team in the league. Hand off Emmett Smith at the five, up to the three, to the one, touchdown Emmett Smith, hello record. But when Emmett Smith couldn't gain an inch on fourth and one, it appeared that the Cowboys' whole season was thrown for a loss. Same play. Didn't get it again. Didn't get it again. That's unbelievable. This is unbelievable. What in the hell? The fourth down failure was a turning point for the Cowboys, but not in the way most people expected. Guys didn't get the first down. Barry Switzer had nothing to do with that. You guys need to get off Barry Switzer. Players lost the game. Barry Switzer didn't lose no game. With his team squarely behind him, Barry Switzer's Cowboys got their revenge in the playoffs. Here's a reverse to Deion Sanders. Cuts up field at the 25. Now reverses direction. Finds a blocker. At the 20. To the right. To the 10. To the 5. Oh, Deion Sanders. No calls were second guessed as the Cowboys crushed the Eagles and secured a spot in the NFC Championship. We kicked their ass today. We played like that last time. It wouldn't have to even come down to a fourth and foot. So let's bury that. <laughs> okay, for it, take that mic. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we all learned from this season. No player is indispensable, especially in the AFC. Rod Woodson injured his knee in the season opener, and Pittsburgh still won the Central. In Buffalo, Andre Reid, Thurman Thomas, both missed games, but the Bills won the East. And in the West, in Kansas City, Joe Montana retired, yet the Chiefs produced the best record in the NFL. The Steelers, Bills, and Chiefs all prove that pro football is, and always will be, a team game. Let's play with boys! The impassioned Let's pep talks of head coach Marty Schottenheimer set the tone for the Chiefs season. Join the circle. Let's tie the circle together and let's get it done. Start fast, finish strong. Go! No team finished stronger than Kansas City. They defeated Houston in the final 15 seconds of regulation time. He's at the 25 30. McNair fumbles the ball. He fumbles it. Picked up. Picked up by Mark Collins. Also among the Chiefs' league-leading 13 victories were three overtime wins. And one of them was secured by Tamarick Vanover's 86-yard punt return. Runs by one guy, gets a block, goes to the 20, up to the 30, up the sidelines, and Bennett hits him and knocks him down. He's gone! 40, 30, 20, and it's over! Kansas City wins! The Miracle Chiefs do it again! Miracles also seemed to transpire in Buffalo, where healing was required throughout the entire season.
battered and bruised, the Bills saw many of their starters sidelined by injury. But the team's resilient spirit was symbolized by head coach Marv Levy, who underwent prostate cancer surgery, then returned to the sidelines just three weeks later, feistier than ever. Hey, Scott, that's a chicken call! Scott, that is a chicken call! That is the most chicken call I've ever seen, Tony! Who threw that flag, you know? Who? He's an idiot, the guy. He keeps doing it all the time. The unexpected revival of the aging, aching Bills was engineered by many, including reserve receiver Bill Brooks, number 80, and linebacker Bryce Popp, number 95, the NFL leader in quarterback sacks. The Bills returned to postseason play after a year's absence, and in the opening round of the playoffs, Buffalo produced a league record 341 rushing yards. Here's a run by Derek Hall, trying to get outside. He breaks a tackle at the 20. He gets to the 15. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. He's in for the touchdown. What a great run. And this crowd is bedlam. It's pandemonium. It's pandemonium. Right on. Back. Hooray, for Mark. He's a horse's ass. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. Let's go, baby. Before the season began, the Pittsburgh Steelers loomed as solid Super Bowl contenders. Head coach Bill Cowher was determined to make good on those preseason predictions. But when it came time to play, the team seemed to lack fire and focus. In dropping four of their first seven games, the Steelers took it on the chin. Bill Cower has the kind of chin that can absorb punishment, and his enthusiasm kept the team together. He demanded better, and the Steelers responded. No, no, it's not smart. Willie, Willie. Listen, listen, I love your enthusiasm. I love, hey, listen, remember, this is some toys, okay? Don't okay, cross this 15, all right? Don't cross this 15. I want you to remind those guys, let's not get frustrated. They're good defense, they're not talking always in the I know, I'm just telling, remind those guys, let's finish. The once conservative Cowher took a go for broke approach, especially on offense, where the forward pass found a prominent place in a formerly run oriented attack. Oh! Good job, big guy. That's how you bounce back. That's all we believe, baby. Number 10, Cordell Stewart, was the most exciting experiment to emerge from Coach Cower's lab. The quarterback slash receiver became known, appropriately enough, as Slash. Hey, Slasher! Look like you're running before. Good job, Slash. Slash supplied an exclamation point to nearly every play he appeared in. The Steelers also possessed a still potent ground game. And as always, the Steelers boasted a devastating defense. Let's go! Put these guys away! Let's tee off, man! The front seven anchored the AFC's best run-stopping unit. Go hit the guy! Pittsburgh's defense propelled the Steelers to eight victories in their last nine games. In and, it's tipped and, intercepted. and the Steelers won the AFC Central for the second straight year. He's in for the Steelers touchdown. You know, we don't play our best football game, but you know what you did? You find a way to win. There's a belief, there's a will, and I'll tell you what, if you stay at things and you don't ever stop believing, you make your own good fortune. 
Teams have to come through here. Uh, yeah. Go to the Super Bowl. Yep, yeah, baby. Yeah. Talk long. to me. In the division playoff, all the elements that had given the Steelers their volatile chemistry operated at full force. What a catch! What a clutch catch by Yancey Thigpen! Bam through the hole, and he's on his feet at the five. He's all the way for the Steelers touchdown. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a knockout punch. Hey, big man, that's the way you run in the fourth quarter. You hear? That's good. On this road, the Pittsburgh Steelers were fueled by the fiery personality of head coach Bill Cowher. Hey, it's a nice feeling. Like I said, this was a three-game season. That's the first game, and next week is the second game. And I don't give a who we play. You know, we've been producing this special for 16 years. And each season has its own storyline. But it always comes down to four teams playing two games for that one chance to become a champion. Ladies and gentlemen. Upstart Indianapolis Colts and the heavily favored Steelers. And they enter the stadium, they will be swallowed by a veritable vortex of terrible cows. The winner of this game goes to Phoenix, and the loser is left to lick his wounds. Ah! Let's go now! Let's go! Let's get it on! How will I stand in? How will I stand in in the house on the hill? Mm, how will I stand in? How will I stand in, in the house? Pass interference, it wasn't called. Floyd Turner was alone in the end zone. It's 3 0, the Packers, Dallas threatening. Wide right, pass over the middle, caught by Deion Sanders, 40, 35, 30, 25, down to the 20, still running, 15, to the 10, Sanders doing the dance all the way down the field, he's hard to keep up with. Eight, short drop, throws, caught, touchdown, Michael Irvin, I don't know how he got it, but I'm glad he did. Eight, play action, throws to Michael Irvin, caught by Michael Irvin, touchdown Michael Irvin, the Cowboys have taken a 13 to 3 lead. Well, you get the feeling that the Steelers are not real comfortable with what they're seeing defensively from the Colts. Look at Cordell. Looks, looks. Now he's going to scramble right. Gets a block, turns, looks for the end zone, fires, and it. Out of the end zone for the touchdown. Slash, Stewart. Yoyer, that will look. We got a ball game here, and the Steelers are finally on top for the first time. Red line ball from the huddle. All right, you all right? I'm not. It's a tough place to get the ball. We've got to get Brett Favre on hips here, Jim, or this is going to be a long day. Brett on a play-action pick, goes back, throws, got a man upfield, touchdown. Wide the open, struck to the 40, 35, 30, he's going to go. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Do it. You can see it from the beginning. If Favre gets hot, he can get real hot. He's got a touchdown. Wide open. Keith Jackson, touchdown, but a bullet down the middle. And the Packers have come back to lead the ball game. Seventeen, fourteen Packers. Momentum tastes a little like cheddar. Give our block credit. He is slippery as a cold fish. I'm telling you, he goes boom, but he's done that repeatedly today. Plays in the back. Big fun for outside, backslide, take it in the sun. 
again, blocking again, and Emmett scores. Cowboys land a jab to the jaw. The Colts have played one whale of a football game here today. The folks who set him up as an 11 point underdog have no idea. He's got it. has turned around completely. Hey, baby, I love you, man. I love you, man. What did I tell you? And it is Dallas 31, the Packers 27. He pulls the ball down, fires it downfield. And oh, and a bad throw. And up the sideline, Dallas, and uh, back to the 50-yard line. This has been a miracle season for Brett Favre, but the turnover may be too much to overcome. Oh, he went for it all. He went for it all. Eva finally put that ball right on the money. And his dealers look like they may extend and come back from the jaws of defeat and a thrill of victory. They will be able to bam off the right side. He's driving. And driving into the end zone is Bam Morris for the Steelers. The season has five seconds to run. Here we go for the right to go to the Super Bowl. Oh boy, everybody here is on pins and needles. Right hand corner. Everybody in the end zone. They battle the ball. It is good. Oh my God. No, they say it's complete. It is dropped. No. The Steelers are headed to Phoenix. And this is one of the most unbelievable football games we have ever witnessed. The Steelers and the Cowboys in Arizona for Super Bowl 30. The black and gold will descend on the desert. The battery is supercharged, and that charge will be led by the terrible towel. I'll drink to that! Two storied franchises are the only teams remaining on the most fabled road in America. The road to the Super Bowl. into the desert they came. Two of the NFL's proudest franchises vying for pro football's ultimate prize. The Dallas Cowboys rode into Super Bowl 30, confident of winning an unprecedented third world championship in four years. In only his second season with the Cowboys, head coach Barry Switzer was matched against the Pittsburgh Steelers' Bill Cower. A former NFL player and assistant, Cower was the youngest head coach to lead his team to a Super Bowl. And in Sun Devil Stadium, his boundless enthusiasm would help fuel this duel in the desert. I'm in for you one play. Huh? I'm in for you one play. I just want one play. <laughs> Let's go, everybody up! Hey, it's been a long time coming! But we finally here! I'll tell you something, guys. We've come too far. We've overcome too much. Let's go out here and play a complete game. Let's go from the Alpha to the Omega. Poise, 60 minutes, and physical. Kick these Pittsburgh Steelers' ass up and down the field. Right on this kickoff. Hey.
On the first series of Super Bowl 30, the Dallas Cowboys demonstrated why they were the favorites. Larry Allen's block on Steelers linebacker Greg Lloyd sprung Emmett Smith for 23 yards, and it appeared the Cowboys' huge offensive line could dominate the much smaller Steelers' defensive front. A steady diet of Smith runs mixed with passes from Troy Aikman marched the Cowboys deep into Steelers' territory. The Cowboys' initial drive yielded the game's first points as Chris Bonio connected on a 42-yard field goal. Their next possession would be even more rewarding. Aikman added to the Steelers' troubles when he launched a 47-yard bomb to Deion Sanders. In only seven plays, Dallas had driven to the Steelers' three-yard line. Flex left, scat left, 495 up drag, on one, on one. And on first down, on one, on one. the Cowboys were poised to score the first touchdown of Super Bowl 30. Set! Novacek hesitated like he was blocking, sneaks out, nobody picks him up. He was wide open, just an easy little toss break. After only two possessions, the Cowboys had a 10 to nothing lead, and a punishing Dallas defense left Pittsburgh unable to retaliate. Mistakes and a stalled running game kept the Steelers stuck in reverse throughout the first quarter. Let's go, settle down! Pittsburgh seemed unable to grasp their Super Bowl opportunity, or for that matter, anything else. Okay. You guys are panicking. Relax. But one quarter does not a Super Bowl make. And fortunately for the Steelers, there were three quarters left to play. Lot of football. Lot of football. Leading 10 to nothing as the second quarter began, Dallas used its third possession to mount still another scoring drive. Aikman straight back to pass. Hands all day. Throws down the middle to Michael Irvin. Touchdown, Cowboys. 24 yards, and the playmaker has scored. Well, then there's a flag. It is against Dallas. You know, they're going to call offensive pass interference. Troy Aikman's touchdown pass turned out to be nothing more than a mirage in this desert duel. So let's look at the replay. And uh, Irvin, notorious for pushing off. Well, that is his reputation, and uh, he will push off on you constantly. I'm on your side, baby. I know, I know that thing. I appreciate it. I snatched his ass. I know you did. You're ready. See, I saw you with the right hand thing. Denied the touchdown it wanted. Just gotta keep him out of the end zone. Dallas still had the ball deep in Pittsburgh territory. But for the first time in Super Bowl 30, the Steelers rose up and stuffed the Cowboys. Right, Pitcher to the right on third and one, and Emmett is tackled for a loss on the play, and a big play it is. Pittsburgh breathed a sigh of relief as Dallas was forced to settle for another field goal. Snap and the ball down, the kick is in the air, and it's right down the middle. That kick splits the uprights perfectly. 6-0-3 remaining in the first half. And the Cowboys lead the Steelers 13-0. As the second quarter unfolded, it was clear that Pittsburgh's offense was still being shoved around by the Dallas defense. Steelers quarterback Neil O'Donnell was sacked by Charles Haley, number 94. And even when he wasn't under pressure, Number 14 was having trouble getting the ball into his receiver's hands. A second sack 
This one by Chad Henning, number 95, only added to the Steelers' misfortune. And Pittsburgh's luck didn't improve when an apparent game-breaking play turned out to be a rule-breaking play. Not much of a rush, so Stark has one come off the side of his foot. It's low and it's an over-spiral. Hits it to 29, goes inside the 20, takes a Steeler bounce to about the 15. The Cowboys touched it, and the Steelers dive on it! The Cowboys appear to touch it down there. What are they going to call? And now the officials are going to give Dallas no! the football at the 13-yard line. What's the call? He got locked into it. He touched the ball. They ruled that the player was blocked into the football. Which he was. Uh, and, you know, that's a good call. The rule coaches that if he gets blocked into the ball, it's like he didn't even touch it. He and he ended up not to. Huh? The he guy was behind it. He pushed him from behind him. Oh, wait a minute. That's not a rule. Yes, oh, it is. is. That's a rule. The guy I promise you it's a rule. It's like it never even touched anybody when he blocked him in. You get blocked into the ball, you're telling me if it touched him, that's, if there's no touching this? By rule. All right. Can't argue the rule. You also couldn't argue that on this day, the NFL's best running back couldn't be stopped. Because the Steelers had all but contained Emmett Smith. Pittsburgh held the NFL's leading rusher to just 40 yards in the first half. And on the final possession of the second quarter, the Steelers' offense finally began to move. Empty right, 74, Empty double right. delay. 74, double delay. Given time to scan the field and find the open receiver, Neil O'Donnell drove Pittsburgh back into the game. On third and 20, O'Donnell's pass to Andre Hastings gained 19 yards and seemed to spark the Steelers' attack. Pittsburgh converted on fourth and inches, then proceeded to finish a 54-yard drive. Pittsburgh was mixing it up and moving the ball, thanks in large measure to a gritty group of receivers. Time out, time out, time out, time out. There were just 17 seconds remaining in the half. Empty left. You want to go empty left? Use empty one. left, back motion, 75, flood slant, ZK, Rita. Right, right. If you complete it short, we got to clock it. Now at the Dallas six-yard line, the Steelers were close enough for a momentum-turning touchdown. Slight pattern for the goal line. Touchdown, Steelers! Pulling that ball in is Nancy Thickpen, and this place is on fire. Look at the terrible towel swirling. Oh, damn it, you not got it! That was a great throw by O'Donnell. That ball was humming. That's a beautiful throw, and it is right in front of Deion Sanders. And this Super Bowl game is on. We might have something now. 30, 30 minutes! 30 minutes! 30 minutes! With 30 minutes remaining in Super Bowl 30, the Dallas Cowboys still had not ignited their trademark offensive fireworks. 495 F drag. Oh, wow. And thanks to the Steelers' defense, the Cowboys' offensive outburst never happened. The Cowboys' passing game fizzled, and its powerful running game built around Emmett Smith stumbled, tripped up by the Steelers' team speed. And they give it to Smith, and Smith will be tackled for a loss at the 31-yard line by LeVon Kirkland, who shot the gap and came in clean. That was a great example of the Steelers' speed outmanning the Cowboys. Good job. But just when Pittsburgh seemed to be gaining momentum, 
The Dallas defense stole it back with one play. Way through the third quarter. Steelers trail 13-7 with a big third and nine at the 48. Here's O'Donnell, big blitz. And he fires a pass, and it's pulled in and intercepted at the 40, the 50. He's at the 45, the 40. The Dallas defender dives over a blocker, and with the football down at the 23-yard line is Larry Brown with a big interception. And the shame of it is O'Donnell threw it right to him. There was no receiver out there. I don't know if there was a miscommunication there or what. He returned it all the way to the 19-yard line of the Steelers. And that is a real harmful play to the Steeler cause. He's in now. That's that. The all win that Ernest coming underneath. To get it to. Is that who you're trying to throw it to? Okay. 65. Ball just sailed a little bit. That's how you play, Larry. That's how you play, baby. Handed the first turnover of Super Bowl 30, it took Dallas merely two snaps to travel the final 18 yards. Play action. Roll to the right. Aikman has all day. Fires. Caught. Michael Irvin and out of bounds. Gator left, Bronco right, 989, F-Rump sneak. And Dallas is knocking at the door. Touchdown, Cowboys! Emmett Smith gets the touchdown. The Cowboys convert points from the turnover in just two plays and open up a 13-point lead. Hey, let's go! Thank you. A lot of football. A lot of football. Let's With go. the third quarter winding down, it became obvious the Cowboys simply couldn't shake these pesky Steelers. Damn! Pittsburgh began pulling out all the stops and mounted a drive it hoped would reclaim the touchdown it had so easily thrown away. As the drive neared midfield, the Dallas defense finally rose up and challenged Pittsburgh's gutty comeback. Short yardage offense, third down and one from the 48-yard line. Long signal count by O'Donnell. Handoff goes to Van Morris. He's stuck right at the line of scrimmage. I think he's short. Fourth down. Now we'll see how Bill Coward decides to play it. Well, we're going for it now. Don't tell me about punting because we're going for it. Cower has got to gamble. He's doing it here. In motion is Ernie Mills. Handoff goes to Van Morris. He didn't make it. He did not make it. Three plays needing a yard. Three plays, needing a yard, and the Cowboys' defense stuffs them. Though the gamble had come up short, the Steelers' resolve couldn't be second-guessed. No, it's my decision not to punt. It's all on me. Can't make it yard, and you're down by 13 points. You don't deserve to win a championship. Two shots. Is that the right thinking? I don't know, but that's my thinking. First down balance. As the fourth quarter began, the Steelers turned to their bruising running attack in order to get them back into the game. I like to run the flow 36. I like to hammer it right down them right now. Bam Morris landed the first blows. However, Dallas would strike back. O'Donnell a short drop, throws downfield, oh! and then fumble. Scott Case put a hit on Ernie Mills at the 36-yard line. Mark Bruner's alert recovery set up a Norm Johnson field goal. Now. Trailing by 10 with 11 minutes to play. It was time for another cower gamble. Can go surprise on side? Huh? Can go surprise on side? Anything, Chan. Chan. Surprise on side? Hey, let's do it. Surprise on side. 
Kevin Williams and Brock Marion are the two deep. And the Steelers try an outside kick, and they got it! And a man running with a football at the 50, Dion Figures! How about that? Damn! Oh, that's a great call. The Steelers trailing 20 to 10, threaten to make this a football game once again. Hey, let's, go. let's go, baby. Inspired by this bold move, the Steelers seize the momentum away from the startled Cowboys. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Dallas did its best to snuff out the Steelers' fire. But only nine plays after the onside kick, Cowers' daring call produced a seven-point reward. The give to Bam. And Bam walks into the end zone for the Steeler touchdown. Bam Morris turned to the right, followed the lead, blocking a John L, and got into the end zone. And we got a dandy in Super Bowl 30. Has a gutsy call on the onside, all right? Great call. Uh, great. Close. I love it. Got us into the game. Yes. Let's get down first of all, man. Better yet, let's put that man's on ourselves. Hey, listen, focus, motion, talking, everybody in the game. One man at a time, baby. This is what you've been working for all year long. Let's get it done. Here we go. One, two, three, deep. One, two, three, deep. Dallas responded to Pittsburgh's challenge like champions. But when the Steelers' LeVon Kirkland blitzed on third down, Troy Aikman stumbled in the direction that seemed to symbolize where the Cowboys were heading. What, what are you guys thinking? All right. Yeah. That's what's got us here. Steelers quarterback Neil O'Donnell was armed with his four wide receiver set and over four minutes to play. But it would be an unlikely cowboy hero who would end the Steelers' comeback and determine the outcome of Super Bowl 30. Battle again in the shotgun with four wideouts. He gets a snap, here comes an outside blitz. The pass is picked up and open field. Here comes Larry Brown to the 15. He's to the 10 and he's knocked out of bounds on the far side at the Steelers' six yard line. O'Donnell threw the ball out there and Larry Brown was the closest man to it when it came in. It worked in Dallas's favor. Larry Brown's second shocking interception earned him the game's most valuable player award and put Dallas in position to finally lock up the game. Second and goal from the four. Watkins in motion, handoff Emmett Smith on the right hand side. Touchdown! He leans forward to the end zone. Emmett Smith scores! The Cowboys should have it with that touchdown by Emmett Smith. Quiet most of the day, Emmett Smith beat LeVon Kirkland, the one man he had to beat, and proved that great players aren't always great. They're just great when they have to be. And the Cowboys are celebrating. While the Cowboys celebrated an unprecedented third Super Bowl title in four years, the Steelers were left to ponder how close they had come to a world championship. You can celebrate because your Cowboys are world champions again. And the Cowboys win another Super Bowl title under owner Jerry Jones. And the big question now is, how big will the next ring be? I want to say to Jerry Jones, he said to me, are you having a good time now, Jerry? <laughs> The Dallas Cowboys, champions of Super Bowl 30 and the dominant team of the 90s. Like the two teams, the final rewards of this duel in the desert were indeed a study in contrasts. Good job, Bill. I'm sorry. We'll see in the locker room, okay? 
Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose.